Welcome back to another episode of the ACE Talks podcast, where we talk about Ecuador and a little more. And today, we're going to take a bit of a deep dive into healthcare in Ecuador. And the reason why we're talking about healthcare in Ecuador is because I recently had a healthcare related experience myself. So we're going to talk a little bit about that recent experience that I had. We're going to talk a bit about my past experiences with healthcare here in Ecuador, going to hospitals and such. And I'm also going to give you some of the answers to the questions I made to doctors here in Ecuador. And don't forget to stick around till the end for my final thoughts on healthcare here in Ecuador. So starting off with my recent healthcare experience, maybe you did or maybe you didn't know, but I am actually injured. That's why I have a cast on my left leg and I have crutches right now that I have to use for approximately two months. The reason for this obviously is because I was playing sports and when you do any sports, even though mine is a little bit more aggressive since it is a contact sport, you do risk the chance of getting injured and unfortunately this time, it was my turn to get injured. But leaving that to the side, what happened the day that I got injured was that I went straight through the process of what any person who gets injured here in Ecuador would have to go through. First, I had to go in a ambulance to the hospital. And I specifically went to the Hospital de Especialidades, which is the specialty hospital, because I actually have a friend on the team, on the football team, who works in this hospital. So the process from the field we were playing at to the hospital was decent. It was okay, there were no problems, and I got there with no complications. Once I arrived, I was taken straight to the emergency room and asked a few questions, things, basic things such as my name, who brought me here, what had happened, and then afterwards, I was just laid out on a bed to wait. The good thing is that I didn't have to wait very long because my friend, who was the one who worked at the hospital, got there not too long after I arrived and he started explaining the situation and that's when the process really, really began. And the reason why it might not sound like I enjoyed the process very much was because I actually didn't. Because one of the first things that they did was they told me that they had to strip me in order to get me changed into a gown and weirdly enough, a diaper as well. And they actually, the, the bad thing about this whole situation being in that spot, I mean, I love the attention, it was fast, but the bad thing was that there were no curtains. So even though there weren't a lot of people, since luckily it was a Saturday and luckily there just happened to be not a lot of people there, everyone could, from the outside, see. And even though they covered me with a blanket, like a towel kind of thing, it was still very uncomfortable because the thought that someone could see was not something that you actually want to go through in that moment. I know some people have no shame and no problem in showing off their private parts, but I'm not one of those people. So it was a very uncomfortable experience and something maybe you, if you go through the same experience that I did, might have to go through if you go through healthcare here in Ecuador. So after stripping me and giving me a kind of half shower and then afterwards getting me in the gown, I just had to wait a bit of time, and then after some time, they took me to get an x-ray. In the process of me getting the x-ray, my brother and one of my friends from the football team arrived, and they waited for me, but during that time, I also went, and I got my x-ray. It took a bit longer than I expected, and I did notice that the doctors in the x-ray room were kind of having a conversation. I'm not sure if that's normal in all medical settings, but it is something that I noticed, so I had to wait a little while, while they gave me the x-rays, they took it from different angles, and then afterwards, they wheeled me back to the room. And that's another thing I wanted to mention, that the wheeling process from one room to the other was actually very comfortable. I'm not used to anyone wheeling me from place to place, but it felt relaxing. The hospital looked very nice, so I didn't feel intimidated by the hospital setting. The only thing that actually did intimidate me during that whole process was the stripping down and the forcing me to wear a diaper before knowing what exactly my situation was. But anyways, my friend and my brother were waiting for me when I arrived back to where I was at initially, and so was my friend who had brought me there, or well, who worked in the hospital, and we just had some time to talk while we waited for them to analyze the x-rays. 
In the process, since my friend was there, he did give us slight updates as to how the situation was going, and he did tell me that the person who was going to check out my injury was a specialist doctor who actually checked him out when he had a similar injury. So after waiting some time, let's just say about 30 minutes to an hour or so, the specialist doctor arrived, he checked out my foot, he checked out the x-rays, and then he just determined that the only thing that I needed was to have a cast and that surgery was not required. He did tell me I had a fracture, which wasn't the main thing that was wrong with my foot. It was actually the fact that it was dislocated, but luckily that it was put back into position on time before the injury could end up worse. Which is actually good because something that I forgot to mention was that when I arrived and while I was waiting for my friend and my friends and for the doctor to check me out, one of the people who were in that medical room was a policeman, which also made it even more uncomfortable that they had to strip me down. And he started telling me, oh, I had a similar injury to what you had. Uh, I can't play sports anymore. Uh, I had to get these like screws or these metallic plates put into my foot. So now I can't do sports. So it was kind of demoralizing, but I realized that's not the hospital's fault. Just the person who was next to me, the policeman just happened to have a seemingly similar case. And I guess just felt like talking to me and telling me about it and didn't realize that maybe it might, you know, make me panic a little. So after getting checked out by the specialist and having the cast placed on my foot, I had to go get another x-ray to make sure everything was well done with the cast. And then after getting the x-ray, I was told that I would be discharged from the hospital. But this is where another slight inconvenience that I noticed happened was the fact that as soon as I got back from the x-ray room, my friend, who was the one who worked there, he had left. And that's okay, because he had to go home, he was tired, and he had to go check on his family. But while I was waiting there, because I was supposed to get discharged, it took a lot longer just to wait for that moment to be discharged than the whole process that I was waiting there while getting everything done. This led me to the hypothesis that maybe the fact that he was a doctor there made the whole process go by faster and once he left, it was just as long as they had to take or as long as they wanted to take. Because in reality, there weren't really a lot of people there that day. And even while I was waiting, I think only one other person arrived and there was already only one other person there and it was just maybe three or four of us. I could be wrong, but this is just me telling you what exactly my experience was. But after a long process of waiting, I finally got discharged, I was wheeled out on a wheelchair, and my friend who had brought his car went and he took me in the car and we left. Another thing that was also kind of awkward was waiting at the entrance of the hospital while my friend went to get the car, because like I said, I was in the gown, and even though you couldn't really see much with the gown, like maybe if you were looking at the specific angle or something, you could see something, but for the most part, you couldn't see anything, but it still felt very uncomfortable, which might just be a normal thing in all hospitals. It was just something that made me personally feel uncomfortable. Apparently, in the process of all of that, my brother was also given a list of the medication that I needed. I was not given crutches, which was something that you know, was unfortunate and fortunate for me that I actually had, and that in the process, I didn't know I still had them because I've had these since I was in the United States. But Luckily, a friend of ours from the football team had a pair of crutches and he lent us them before I got home and then afterwards realized that I had my own crutches. And that was my current hospital healthcare related experience. So now let's go on to my past healthcare experiences and try to spot some similarities with these experiences, even with the one that I most recently had. So probably one of the earliest healthcare experiences that I had here in Ecuador was when I was actually a part of the Federation, which is the place where people do sports here in Ecuador to the professional level. It's basically your beginning before you go professional. So you do sports at the Federation. And as part of what the Federation offers, if you become a good enough athlete, is actual healthcare, you know, medical attention. So at that time, I had gotten injured once, and I think again, it was one of my feet that got injured, and I got injured and I got checked out at the Federation. Since I got checked out at the Federation, it was free, I got checked out, and everything was all right. 
not with my foot, everything was not all right, I was not able to compete, but everything was all right in the sense that it was free and I got my medical attention. Then, years after that had happened, I actually had to go to the hospital, but in this case, it was because I had this problem, or at least I felt I had a problem, with the way I was breathing. I sometimes felt like I was suffocating and I had no idea what was causing it. In that time, the sister of a friend of mine was actually in the ES hospital working in the emergency room. So my friend recommended to me to go and talk to her and see if I could get checked out. I decided to take him up on that offer and I actually did go get myself checked out and she was the one who helped me get through the process really quickly and get an actual penicillin shot. Needless to say, after that, I did feel much better, but at times, I did feel like I still had problems breathing, so I'm not really sure if the problem was related to something medical or maybe it was something psychological. But the point being that I did get the medical attention I needed in a very quick way. Then we fast forward again, and at one point in my life when I had a girlfriend, and this girlfriend had her mom who worked at the ES as well, one day I wanted to get myself checked because I needed some, some blood tests. And since she worked in that area, specifically close to that area, I went to her and she actually had me checked out. I brought her the sample that she needed and I got the results very quickly. And as you could probably tell from what I just said, there was actually no hassle. And then probably the last time I had anything medical related was when I got myself checked my blood again to see my cholesterol levels because my cholesterols have always been kind of awkwardly high and I got that checked out. But in this case, I did go to a specific place where you had to pay for the test. I got the test done, I paid for it and everything was cool. The good thing is that my cholesterol wasn't high so I didn't need to do anything after that test. And those were my past healthcare, hospital, medical related experiences here in Ecuador. And you probably noticed the similarity between some of them, but we'll talk about that at the end of this episode. Now, before we go into my final thoughts, we do have some questions that I asked some friends who are doctors and even one friend who's studying to become a doctor about healthcare here in Ecuador. One of my friends who is a doctor has had less time in the medical field while the other has had more. And the one who is studying to become a doctor has already gone through most of the process. So he's almost done. But the thing is, all three of their opinions are very important because all three of them have lived here in Ecuador and have the experiences not only as doctors or trying to become a doctor, but also as people who have tried to get healthcare services here in Ecuador, their whole lives. So they have a lot to say on this topic. Well, some more than others. I asked all of them seven questions, but I did also ask one of them one extra question, which I will leave for the end. So starting with the first question, the first question that I asked them was, what is the best part or best parts of the healthcare system in Ecuador, aside from the fact that it's free. The first doctor, the one that has less time in the healthcare system, said that it is the fact that it is accessible. The fact that you can find medical centers in rural areas. In other words, medical attention that would be difficult to find since you'd have to go to a hospital now becomes easier to find with these medical centers. The only problem with that though is that these rural area medical centers are not always well equipped and wouldn't be adequate for certain problems that may present themselves. The second doctor, the one that has more time in the medical field, basically just said the fact that it's free, the fact that the Ministry of Public Health exists. Which kind of leads me to believe maybe they didn't completely understand the question, but this was what they said. Then we have my friend who is studying to become a doctor, who says that aside from the fact that it is free, something that is important to highlight is the accessibility since there are health centers in most sectors of the different cities, and although these centers are not as specialized as a hospital, they do help in a pinch and help manage less complicated diseases, which at the same time helps a little to avoid congestion 
in higher caliber hospitals. Then we move on to the second question, which is what are the problems with having free healthcare in Ecuador? The first doctor says that people use free healthcare for problems that don't require a hospital, problems that can be easily resolved at home through prevention. This causes another issue as well, where people go and demand medication, and if they don't receive it, then the doctor is bad. Doctor Two says that the problem is the lack of doctors, both general and specialists, and a lack of directing the population to the correct attention. Now, when we talk about forms of attention, there are three, or sometimes four, levels of attention, starting from the most basic, which is level one, which is generally being attended by a general doctor. While at the fourth level, there is being attended by a specialist that not many hospitals offer. This is important because it is just not possible for a hospital that's supposed to be used for levels three or four treatment to be filled with patients who only have the flu. Basically meaning that people go to these higher level hospitals when they only require the lower level ones and people aren't well instructed on that front. And then my friend who's studying to become a doctor says that without a doubt, the main problem is the oversaturation that can be found in hospitals when it comes to caring for patients, which obviously causes not all of them to receive the same quality of care. Added to the great lack of medical supplies where many times even the most basic medicine is usually in short supply. And this is a situation that is seen at the national level. So it's not just in one city, but you see it throughout the whole country. Moving on to question three, do you think that the problem or problems that Ecuador has in its healthcare system are problems that other countries would have if they have or would implement a free healthcare system? Or is this a problem that Ecuador exclusively has? Why or why not? So the first doctor says that yes, it seems to be a problem that Ecuador exclusively has. There are other countries that have free healthcare and they're doing well. The problem with Ecuador is that it is too, quote unquote, third world. This has to do mainly with the mentality. And when we talk about the mentality, that's a talking point all on its own. But for the answer to this question, it basically focuses on the fact that even though we've had, Ecuador has had, free healthcare for years, it doesn't get better. It only keeps getting worse. Doctor number two says that the problem is only in Ecuador. There are countries with free healthcare that work perfectly, with a good education to the population. Then my friend who's studying to be a doctor says that he does not think that the problem is specific to Ecuador, but rather in Latin America in general, due to the great deficiency that the public healthcare system has, basically comes from the mismanagement of economic resources by the Ministry of Public Health, and obviously by politicians who are on duty in command at that time. Now we go on to question number four, which is how do you think that Ecuador can improve their healthcare system? The first doctor says that to improve it, you have to make the healthcare system paid. When the healthcare system is paid, people will be more aware and try to prevent getting sick because it's going to cost them. They're not going to go to the hospital for insignificant things because it's going to cost them and the workflow in the hospitals will change for the better. In other words, people who actually have problems will get the attention they need at a pace that is acceptable and that people won't complain about. Doctor number two says that to improve the healthcare system, they need to guarantee faster and more efficient care. Increased care at first level with optimal and fast referrals. Like we mentioned earlier, the first level of attention is not being optimized the way it should. So if they have more first care attention, there'll be less people going into the higher levels of care of attention. And then my friend who's studying to become a doctor says that until Ecuador changes its political representatives, the healthcare situation will not change. Since we are in a country where there is the law of the most savvy, slick, or cunning, because this is the word sabido, which I've mentioned before. If you've checked out podcast episode three, you'll know what I'm talking about. But basically, 
someone who thinks that they're slick, there is this law where people who think that they're slick, there's the political representatives who prefer to sell false illusions to the people rather than really seek solutions. So until we change all of these things, my friend believes that the situation will stay the same and it will not improve. Question number five, are doctors adequately compensated in Ecuador? My first doctor friend says no, but that's because the foundation for what service deserves what pay hasn't been set well. The amount of hours a doctor works here deserves more compensation, but it isn't like that. Although a law was approved recently to reduce how many hours a doctor needs to work. A doctor has what is called guardia, which is like a full day shift, and that can last 36 hours, so even more than a day, almost every two days. So they have to go to this guardia almost every two days and spend over 36 hours there. And the salary that they receive is only $1,200, which isn't adequate compensation considering the amount of work they're doing. Because if you compare it to minimum wage, obviously it's going to look very appealing. But the amount of work that they do almost feels like they work and have no life. Doctor number two simply said no. Doctors should be paid more. And then my friend who's studying to become a doctor says that he believes that in this case, it is necessary to include more than just doctors and also to include nurses, assistants, laboratory workers, and all those who make up a team in a hospital. And to answer the question, no. Healthcare personnel who work in the public sector are not well paid for the amount of work that they have and for the number of situations they have to endure due to the lack of medicines and basic supplies. Now we go on to question six, which was a touchy question for some of these guys, which is basically, is it difficult to find work as a doctor in Ecuador? In case that your answer is yes, what things could possibly simplify the process? My first friend who's a doctor said yes. Unfortunately, there's a system here where we have hospitals, but we don't have supplies and we don't have doctors, but nothing is done about it. The few spots that become available, about 90% of them, are taken by people with connections. In other words, if you don't have a person who can get you the job, then you're more than likely not going to get it. And there's a problem that's linked with this. There's a page that's called Socio Empleo, which is the government's page where you can apply for work. And on that page, there are jobs where they take advantage of you, or they try to at least. They'll ask you to work for eight hours a day for six days, and the pay will be $500. And they do this because there are doctors who need the job. What's worse is that if you want to become a specialist, you know, focus on one area of medicine, it is very tough to do so in the country because it's expensive and a doctor who has no work can't save enough to do so without work, because they have no work, or with a meager wage if they're earning those $500. So most people opt to leave the country to get specialized. Doctor two says, yes, it is difficult. And it is like they mentioned in point number four, in question four, the solution to them is creating more spaces for attention, basically for the basic attention, level one attention as we mentioned earlier, to simplify the process. And then my friend who is studying to become a doctor says that yes, it is very complicated since there are not enough job opportunities for the great demand that exists. Added to the fact that there is a lot of corruption where the most prepared doctor does not get the job, you know, the one who studied the most, the one who deserves it, but the one with the most leverage, which is just connections. I believe that if there were more hospitals, health centers, or public clinics, this would open more jobs that could facilitate the process for those unemployed doctors. And then we have the final question that I asked everyone, which was basically just to give their final thoughts. What were their final thoughts? The first doctor says that the worst thing that could have been done by President Correa was making healthcare free because Correa was the president who made that happen. 
The country wasn't ready for it, for free health care. Why wasn't Ecuador ready for it? Because there isn't a good education for it. That's not to say that this is the fault of teachers, but more the fault of the education at home, the education from your family. Many important things that you learn from your family are not being taught. The country uses ancestral medicine way too much, which isn't necessarily completely a bad thing since it can be good due to the fact that many medicines come from nature. But the problem is that this ancestral medicine is practiced by people who aren't prepared for it. So instead of doing something good, they end up doing something bad. The situation of uh, doing more harm than good. Some of these practices of ancestral medicine, some jobs that come from this jobs are sobador, which is basically a person who treats bone dislocations and performs massages to relieve certain muscle problems. It is quite painful since I, I've had it done to me once. And uh, spoiler, the problem that I had when they did it to me, it was when I was in high school here, it didn't solve the problem. Then there's also the curandero, which is basically like a healer, a person who heals you without a medical degree using natural methods or rituals. The problem here is that if they try to help the injured person and fail, and then that person goes to an actual doctor and the doctor can't help them because the damage is you know, already done, then the doctor is quote unquote a bad professional, but they don't realize it was actually the fault of the person they went to go get attention from first, this ancestral medicine kind of attention. Another thing that goes hand in hand with the poor education mentioned earlier is that people go with a very aggressive mindset to see a doctor. They go aggressively screaming at times to ask for medical attention they don't need and when they don't receive it immediately, they start to say incoherent things like, you eat because of me. And in Spanish, this phrase is, por mi tragas. And it is a very vulgar, vulgar phrase. Um, and this is something medical professionals will say that they've heard someone tell them during their careers. People say this because they pay their taxes, the people pay their taxes or insurance. And these taxes or insurance are what pay the doctors in Ecuador. So if it weren't for them, the doctors wouldn't have a job. This isn't necessarily false because it, it is literal, like taxes pay doctors. But if you think about it, all Ecuadorians pay taxes and doctors pay more taxes than a regular citizen. Add to that the fact that some people will question a doctor's medical assessment and it all just mixes together to show that people lack education and can be very ignorant. An example of a healthcare system that my friend knows is the system in Colombia where they have to pay for their healthcare, but what you pay depends on your social class, your social status, if you will. The upper class pays more while the lower class pays less. But the fact that they pay helps them avoid having hospitals that are collapsed with so much people and people complaining that they aren't receiving the attention they deserve. Because like my friend mentioned earlier, when you have to pay, you don't just go all willy-nilly to a hospital expecting attention for the most minimal thing. Doctor number two had a more specific, shorter, and direct thought, which is the healthcare system in Ecuador is disastrous, selfish, and misdirected. And then my friend who's studying to become a doctor says that in Ecuador, there is a lot of economic deficiency when talking about health. If you go to any health center and ask how they are in relation to supplies, many will have the most basic ones, many will have expired medicines, many will have medicines that are not even recommended to use at the present. Not to mention that many of these places suffer from problems with maintenance, basic services such as electricity, water, etc. And all this comes from mismanagement by the authorities who basically do not allocate the money necessary to the field of health. And the little that is allocated is misused. So as you could probably tell, two of my friends who are professionals, actual doctors in the field, and one who is studying to become one, do not feel that the situation with healthcare is at all good here in Ecuador. But I did ask one friend, the one who I asked the first doctor, I asked him an extra question, more direct towards 
maybe people who are coming to live or retire to in Ecuador. And that is, do you think that foreigners should use the public health care system or should they just go to have a, an insurance and use that to resolve any health care problems? My friend, the first doctor, said that there are definitely some advantages to free health care in Ecuador for a foreigner. The most noticeable and probably obvious one is the fact that it's free. Since in the country that they're coming from, the country that you as a foreigner might be coming from, it is probably quite expensive. Another thing that is a benefit for a foreigner is the fact that in the majority of cases, since they're a foreigner, they tend to receive better treatment, more privileges. This is probably something that we'll have to talk about on a later date in more detail, but for now, just understand that being a foreigner does give you more privileges in certain services here in Ecuador. Having insurance can help as a slight bonus to make the attention faster or better. But this all depends on who the insurance is affiliated with. And that is something that you, as a person who decides to contract an insurance company for your healthcare here in Ecuador, you would have to talk to the specific insurance company to know and then investigate in person because one thing is to ask and another thing is to go and check it out in person and see if it's worth what you're paying for. And all of this leads to my final thoughts. And if you noticed the similarities in my past experience and my recent experience, as well as the things that my friends who are doctors or studying to be doctors have said, it's the fact that without connections, without someone to help you in this healthcare system, either as a patient or as someone looking to work in the healthcare system, you're probably not going to get the attention that you would think you deserve or that you would like, or you're not gonna get the job that you need, deserve, or want here in Ecuador. Just looking at my current experience, everything went by faster and was possible because I had someone working in the actual hospital where I went to. In my past experiences, in the Federation, someone got me into the Federation. When I went to go get myself checked for my whole situation with the breathing, when I had to get the blood test, my girlfriend's mom was working in the hospital at the time. Like my friend said, if you want to get a good paying job and not have to go through the public service that offers you a job that only gives you $500 for an insane amount of hours and an insane amount of work days, then you have to have connections. And once again, this is a talking point for a different day, but definitely something that I will mention right now is that this whole situation with corruption is something, and it's not just corruption actually, it is blatant corruption because I do realize and I do know because I've heard it from so many people that corruption is a thing no matter where you go. But for it to be so blatantly obvious here where everyone knows who's corrupt, where you can be corrupt, and how to be corrupt. It's just something that makes no sense for a country that, I mean, I think wants to get ahead. And don't get me wrong, I will keep saying it, Ecuador is an amazing country. Don't get me wrong. It is a place that you can come to as a foreigner, retire to, have the most amazing experience ever. It is beautiful. You can go out, see amazing sights, visit amazing places, meet amazing people. But don't confuse that reality that you have as a person who is visiting or who comes to live as a foreigner with the reality that someone who has lived here their whole life, their whole lives, that they have to go through because it is not the same. And of course you will find your exceptions, the people who were born with like they say here with a silver spoon in their mouth. Those people have the best lives here of course because how can you not? I've said it before, when you have enough money here in Ecuador and enough money for a person who doesn't want to live an extravagant lifestyle can be anywhere from a thousand to maybe two thousand dollars. If you have that each month, then you're set. But people here don't have that luxury and it is very difficult. Add to that the fact that their public or free healthcare system isn't the greatest, it, it just doesn't add up. And something that I do have to mention in order for what my friend said about the attention here to make sense is the fact that 
people here complain about the doctors, about the healthcare system, about how it's slow, how it doesn't work. But if you listen to what my friends had to say about how healthcare is handled here, people don't go through the right forms of attention. They go to the highest level of attention to get the lowest level of treatment, when they should go to the lowest level in order to diagnose and see if they need the highest level of treatment. But they don't do that because people aren't educated as what my friend said, not what I say, but what my friend said. And something that I do actually agree with because I do see that happen a lot. The complaints that you see all the time and some of them I do agree with because if you see someone is in terrible condition, don't leave them there suffering. I've seen many cases where it's shared in all parts that someone is in a hospital, they're not doing well, they pass out and no one attends them. No one sees what is wrong with them. But other people are getting attended before them because that's just the way the turns work. Obviously, if you're first, you get attended first. But if you don't need that level of attention, what are you doing there? So I do think that we need to clarify and know where to put the blame of this whole situation. It's not the fault of the doctors. The healthcare system itself isn't bad. There might be a few bad, poor medical professionals as there are anywhere else in the world. You can go to a doctor who just happens to be terrible, but not all doctors are like that. A lot of doctors, like something that my friend told me, they try their best to do the best job that they can but it's not their fault if the medical system is so, so full, so congested that the people who need the help, that more dire extreme help, emergency help, they can't get it because there's just no way for them to get it because there's other people who are taking up turns, who are filling up the queue for attention that they don't really need. Which goes back to what my friend said about making the healthcare system paid instead of not paid. Because while it's paid, people will go there even if all they're doing is sneezing. And I know for some people sneezing might be a big deal. It might lead to a worse problem. But there are people with more serious issues who need the help. And it doesn't help that these people are taking up those turns for those people who need it more. And I apologize if I went on a bit of a rant. I'm not a doctor myself. I'm a teacher and I'm ranting about how bad it is for doctors, for people who get medical attention here, who give the medical attention. But as a teacher, I know what it's like to be in this situation, as a teacher in Ecuador, I know what it's like to be in this situation where you might think that everything is okay. Like if you're looking at it from the perspective of the person who's not the teacher, you're looking at it from the perspective of a student, teachers look like they have free time, Teachers look like they don't have to do anything when they get to class, just talk and sit down. Teachers look like they have it easy, but teachers don't have it easy. Teachers don't get compensated enough. And in that same way, doctors don't have it easy. Everyone blames the doctor for the fact that the system itself is messed up. And that's just not fair. So before we end this episode of Ace Talks, I would like to ask that if you see a doctor, no matter where you are, especially if you're in Ecuador, but if you're somewhere else in the world, Tell them thank you for what you do because a doctor's job is very hard. That's not to say that any other job is easy, but a doctor's job here in Ecuador at least with how they're being compensated and how much they have to go through due to lack of equipment and lack of appreciation is just terrible. So make sure to tell the nearest doctor to you thanks or you can leave a comment in, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on YouTube. And also, I hope that this was insightful, useful, helpful to give you an understanding of what it's like to have healthcare here in Ecuador or what it's like for someone who works here in Ecuador to have healthcare. And maybe it'll give you some insight as to whether you want public healthcare or maybe you want insurance, private healthcare. That's up to you wherever you go. And of course, you can ask me questions through my email, gmacemb at gmail.com or you can ask me questions on my YouTube channel, GM Ace, or of course, I also have social media, Instagram, threads, Twitter, where you can also hit me up and ask me anything that you need to know. I will try to respond as quickly as possible. Stay tuned for future episodes of the Ace Talks podcast. Make sure you take care, and as always, Ace out.